Wait. As soon as I start talking, they start making noises. Um, okay, cool. Welcome back. Uh, oh my God, Justin, you're doing two videos in the same week. What is going on? Is what you're all thinking, right? Um, yeah, I'm in a weird, good mood today, aren't I? Uh, I was in a weird, good mood yesterday. I was in such a good mood yesterday that I was irritating my wife. Because um, when I get... Um, when I get bumped out of being in like a depressed, shitty mood and I start feeling better, I start getting goofy and I start getting irritating. What is going on with this light? Okay. Um, yeah, so I start getting irritating and I start doing silly things and, well, you know, my, my whole thing in life is schadenfreude. <laughs> I, I, enjoy, I, I enjoy watching other people not enjoy themselves i don't know it's it's something funny to me um the more uncomfortable you are the funnier it is to me mickey you want to stop there bud thanks um so yeah i'm in a good mood today because my phone keeps shut up um i'm in a good mood today because uh if you look over my shoulder there you notice something's missing? Yeah. See that right there? That guy? There's only one of them. And you know what? I don't even really need it. Yeah. Kind of use it as a sort of a pseudo cane in a way. Um, I don't really need it for the most part. I kind of just hold it in front of me and help balance myself because I am walking again. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, I, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not running around. I'm not crawling up or climbing up stairs or anything. Uh, but I am, I am up on two feet and I'm moving around. Um, toes, my toes are still bruised like crazy. Um, but I can at least, I can at least bear my weight on across my heel and then, uh, up through my big toe. If I stand on that sort of edge, I'm good. I can walk sort of on that. I can't uh, push off off my uh, my metal tarsals and my toes yet. Everything's just still, you know, it, it's bruised. It's gonna take a few days. But um, I officially, uh, my personal physician is officially the greatest man on the planet. Um, when uh, when I first started going to him a little over a year ago, uh, this was an issue that I had brought up and said, you know, this is something that I've 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 dealt with over the years and, but you know, it's a hard thing to diagnose when it's not acting up and just all, all, all the things that happen in life never allowed me to really see him when it was happening because I've never had a, a really severe episode like this one until now. Um, Hey, um, so the, uh, with, with, with this, with this episode being, uh, taking so long, I was able to finally show him what was going on. Um, so when I, uh, when I, I actually had had an appointment with him cause you know, taking care of the, the blood pressure and everything. Um, so it was just a follow-up appointment. And, uh, so when he came in, he saw the crutches and like, all right, what'd you do? And I said, Hey, well, you know, uh, we talked about that foot problem that I have when I first started seeing you and you wanted to see it when it finally happened. Here you go. Um, so I took off my boot. We both, uh, cringed at how bad my foot smelled. Um, he got over it and inspected my foot and he said, well, I am officially diagnosing you with gout. So great applause to the wonderful Dr. Kodzi, uh, the first man in 12 years to finally have the cojones to, uh, to deem it gout and not think that it's plantar fasciitis. Um, and I mean, I'm not happy that I have gout. Um, I am happy to one, know it's been diagnosed and, and I'll get to why I know the diagnosis is also absolutely correct, but, uh, it's nice to, to, to have a diagnosis because so many times I've had to tell people like there's something wrong with my foot and they're like, Oh, what it is it? And I'm like, well, I don't know what it is. It's this thing that flares up all the time. Da, 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 da. 
So in a way, I always sound like I'm kind of talking out of my ass or I'm making things up. But finally, I can say, no, I got gout and my gout's flaring up. Bah! Um, so that's nice that no longer do I have to lie or not, not that I, fuck, not that I lie, but that it appears as though I'm lying. Um, the other nice thing about it is that, um, uh, once you have something diagnosed, well, now you know how to approach it. You know how to manage it and treat it and all that fun stuff. And the other nice thing about when you have something diagnosed is that you can get medication for it. Yeah. Um, so once he, once he, uh, said, yes, I will diagnose you with gout. You have gout. Here's a prescription for a lovely little medicine called colchicine, colchicine. Um, it's, uh, from what I was reading about it, it is a, basically it's anti-inflammatory that I can take because I'm on blood pressure medication. But holy shit, does it work fast? And does it work good? Um, I went from yesterday when I when I left here to go to the doctor, um, I had to crawl on my hands and knees up the stairs because, you know, I'm not really a, a pro crutcher yet. And um, I'm not about to uh, try and crutch my way up the stairs. So I had to crawl up my hands and knees. Um, and I was still in like some considerable amount of pain. I really couldn't put too much weight on my foot. Um, I, I was maybe putting 15, 20% of my weight on my foot. The rest were on both crutches. Um, so it sucked. Um, but he gave me this, uh, he gave me this script for colchicine. And when I say that he gives me a script for three pills, I mean, it's literally three pills. Um, you take two and an hour later you take the other one. This may seem like I am lying, but I am, I am not, not one bit within four minutes of taking the first two pills. I could feel everything, all of the, all the crystal build up because that is, that's what it is. That's what gout is. It's, it's, a. Uh, um, in case you don't know, you know. The more you know, um, it's a, a uric acid. You, sorry, not a uric, but uric acid is builds up in your blood, and then it forms these crystals in your joints. And these crystals are basically what causes all the inflammation and pain because they're stabbing you like crazy. Um, within four minutes of taking these pills, I could feel the crystals disappearing inside my foot, the inflammation subsiding instantly. It was like instant relief. Um, by the time I took my second pill, um, I was able to, I was able to put weight. I was able to put my entire weight on my foot. Um, I was, you know, I was still a little stiff. I was still bruised. Um, but, uh, I was able to finally, you know, be like, oh, okay. I'm no longer inflamed. I just got to now heal. Um, now the the side aspect is all this all this hopping around on one knee, uh, you know, being a three hundred and fifty pound man, um, jumping on my bad knee, of all, uh, my knee's starting to be acting up. So it's good that my foot's starting to heal because my knee's getting really tired of it. Um, so last night, uh, last night, you know, just it was the first probably really super pleasant sleep because I wasn't having to try to find a a comfortable position for my leg. I could just lay however I felt, um, which was wonderful. And, um, yeah, but this morning, um, I still needed, I still needed, um, both crutches when I first kind of got up, uh, just cause everything wasn't used. You know, I haven't been on my right leg for over a week. Well, yeah, about a week now. So, you know, all my muscles, ligaments, everything is not used to bearing any weight. Um, so when I first woke up this morning, I needed both crutches to kind of move around. But now as the day has kind of gone on, now I'm down to, now I'm down to just a single crutch. Um, I don't have enough strength in my foot to drive and I wouldn't really trust it right now yet, but, uh, I'm hoping by tomorrow I'll be able to be a, an independent man once again. Um, so yeah, again, thanks to, uh, my wonderful Dr. Kazi for finally, Finally, well, not him finally, but, you know, in, in my life finally uh, diagnosing me. And then, uh, you know, I, I was speaking to my wife and my mother about this too. It's um, about how frustrating that is, the fact that 
I have I have long thought it was gout. I'm gonna say at least eight years. I've been quite certain it's gout. Every doctor I saw in that time has basically told me I'm an idiot. Stop self-diagnosing yourself. You know, we're the professionals. Da 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 da. Go buy some Birkenstocks. Um. So it, when I got thinking about it, like that, kind of pissed me off a little bit. You know, I've I've. 12 years of my life, I've dealt with this and had so many misdiagnoses um, and no one ever wanted to, no one ever wanted to approach this from a dietary standpoint. It was always, oh, well, look at you. You are a fat man. So it is obviously a musculoskeletal issue. It's because you're fat and heavy. You're causing stress. There you go. That's why your feet hurt. Not, oh, you're probably eating something wrong and it's making your feet inflamed. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for wasting the last 12 years of my life, you fuckers. Um, and thank you for the hours and hours and hours of pain and anger and depression and sadness and all that shit that I've had to deal with over the last 12 years. And, uh, thank you for the many, many, many lost hours in, uh, emergency uh, emergency room, waiting rooms, uh, doctor's offices, uh, Birkenstock, uh, retailers, uh, people who are making, um, you know, those, uh, foot lifts for me. Thank you. Thank you for all of that, all that wasted time and money. I appreciate that. Every one of you doctors out there that, uh, that did that. I, I thank you so much for, for that. Um, you've been a massive contribution to my life and, uh, and my wallet and my career. Thank you. You've been top notch. Moving on. Okay. Um, so I don't know if anybody, if anyone, um, this is going to be a, sort of a little bit different format today. There's just a few things I kind of want to talk about. Um, I don't know if anyone else out here uh, follows Kevin Smith at all, the filmmaker. Um, Kevin's definitely someone that um, that I've followed for a very long time. Um, you know, he's a huge influence in the whole independent film world um he's a massive influence on my life uh he's someone i've actually tried to contact a number of times regarding projects but uh i just can't seem to get past the gatekeepers um but uh he he suffered a a massive heart attack this week um and uh it's kind of a scary thing um obviously for him uh i mean to, uh, to suffer a heart attack and then, you know, he managed to survive and, and talk about it. Um, kind of put a lot of things in perspective about what I'm doing too, that, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't I, like, he's, he's been taking care of himself a lot better than he used to. I mean, he's, he's lost a lot of weight. I don't know how much he's lost, but in the last couple of years, he's lost quite a bit by, you know, he's, he walks more. He, um, like he routinely gets more exercise. Um, I don't think he's like exercising all the time, but you know, he's always walking. He cut out eating all these sugars. Like he was like a cereal he used to eat cereal. That would be like a snack and he'd eat it all the time. Um, so he's cut out sugars, uh, from his life, but he, so that he's, he's dropped quite a bit, but, um, he had a massive heart attack with a hundred percent blockage of his Widowmaker artery. Um, so, you know, I think he's only 46, I believe I could be, told, I should have looked that up beforehand. But I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a super big expert on Kev. Um, you know, I'm not a biographer, but I do follow him. I, you know, I listen to his podcasts. Um, I watch all of his movies. Some of them I enjoy, some of them not necessarily. Um, let's see here. Yeah. 40. So yeah, he's 47. So Kev's 47. So he's what? 12 years older than me. Yeah. 1970. Yeah. So he's 12 years older than me and, uh, you know, had a heart attack. So, obviously, you know, I wish him the speed of recoveries. Um, he's a huge inspiration in my life and don't want him to see him going anytime soon. Um, there's a number of projects that he has planned for the future that I'm looking forward to. Um, one that I've actually tried reaching out to him to help him get made in Canada. Um, you know, so if you know how to get in touch with him, let him be, tell him I DM'd him a long time ago on Instagram. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to kind of talk about him for a second. Cause it, it kind of hit me just with 
when I woke up in the morning, uh, you know, usually the first thing I do in the morning is I just check my phone. I check, you know, my email and all that stuff. And I, I'll pop on Instagram real quick. And the first thing I saw on Instagram was this picture of Kev. And I, before even reading any of the text, just from the image, I knew what the hell had happened. Because he was laying in bed and he had a hospital gown that was kind of opening and some wires. And being a big guy. I've been to the hospital a few times with some scares and I've had those wires on me and I fucking know what that is. And I knew instantly, I'm like, oh my God, he had a heart attack. Um, and I was, I, I was, I, I got kind of shook up by it. Um, cause I don't want to have a heart attack. And I thought I was having one a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> um, so yeah, uh, I wish him, wish him the best of recoveries. Um, Onto a onto a much more po- well. I mean, Kev surviving. Let's let's say it's it's still a positive. But um, Chris, uh, my buddy Chris Walters, you'd mentioned last week about uh, the David Goggins pod or uh, David Goggins episode on the Joe Rogan uh, podcast. Which, uh, if you don't listen to the Joe Rogan experience, you aren't doing anything with your life that's worth anything. Um, I've been listening to the Joe Rogan pod, or the Joe Rogan experience is what it's called. Um, it's got to be what, three three years now, I think. I've been listening to him pretty much almost every single day. Um, for someone, for people who don't know about the podcast, you might think that Joe Rogan is just uh, the fear factor guy and he commentates on UFC. Well, he's also... A very, very curious man. Um, And that's what I love about him. He's very curious about everything in life. And he brings on the people who are the the most intelligent and most, um, you know, most experienced in their field. And he brings them on to learn from them. Some of them, some of them he doesn't agree with on their stances or their principles or even... Or even you know their points, and he'll he'll argue with them. well, not argue. I'm not gonna say he's gonna argue. He, um, you know, he'll 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 do what a journalist is supposed to do, which is you know question people. You know, make them when someone makes a, an outlandish claim, you know, make them back it up, make them prove it. Um, so he, you know, he will go go toe to toe with people if he doesn't necessarily agree with what they're saying. Um, so it's not a passive conversation by any means. He does get involved quite a bit, but then, you know, he will get someone on like, for the example, like Jordan Peterson, um, the last few times. And, uh, even as recently uh, as David Goggins, um, where when a person is this interesting and has this much of a story to tell, he'll just sit back and let him speak for like a half hour straight before you said, before you hear Joe even get involved. Um, but the reason why I bring up the David Goggins episode, if you haven't listened to it, I will link, uh, I'll link the David Goggins, um, YouTube link as well as the podcast or as well as, um, uh, the, I don't know. You know what? I don't know how you listen to your podcast. I don't know if you listen to iTunes or use a different podcast app. So I'll just link the YouTube thing and then you can figure out how to find Joe on your podcast thing, but you should find Joe. On your podcast player. And if you don't have a podcast player, you should go get one and you should subscribe to the Joe Rogan experience because it will better your life. Trust me. Um, especially with health and nutrition. If any of that, if any of health and nutrition, um, interests you whatsoever, download it. Um, the guy, it's not about heat. Well, he knows what he's talking about. The guy is well fit for a 50 year old man. Um, but he also brings in freaking geniuses, uh, in their fields to discuss things by the way i've noticed i have like a freaking like uh forest whitaker droopy eye thing going on lately i don't know what it is um anyways so david goggins is this guy he's a navy seal uh he's done these ultra marathons but he was at one time 340 pounds or something 340 pounds and then at like 300 pounds he ran his first ever ultra marathon ever without really running before uh he ran a hundred miles in 19 101 miles in 19 hours at 300 pounds and had never really ran before 
out of sheer freaking will. Um, that like that little tidbit alone is insane, but it it doesn't even measure up to the entire story of David Goggins and his life and the f- the in, uh, just insurmountable things that he has done. Um, he he is someone who's obviously extremely extremely inspiring in in what he and what he is, has done in his life. Um, he is someone that is is going to show you the perfect example of what mental strength is because everything he does, like he believe, he believes that you need to suffer. That's it. That's his mantra is you need to suffer. That's the only way you're ever going to get any better is you need to suffer. So you need to take pain and you need, you need to hurt from it and that will help you get better. Um, this guy, like he, he's, he uh, he set the the world record for the most amount of pull ups, which was over like four thousand pull ups. Um, he he failed at it twice. I believe once was on national television, um, and in doing so, he split his hand wide open just because he's doing pull ups nonstop. He did like two thousand pull ups before his hand split open. Um, but this guy, like I say, everything that he does is just about pure mental strength. He he's he's doing things that. Um, like the, the story of him doing the hundred the hundred miles he he got to he got to seventy miles, uh, he was pissing blood he couldn't he literally couldn't move his wife had to help him, uh, she like got him a chair or something and he was laying there and then he basically just went into his head he calls it the cookie jar he goes to the cookie jar to get these these little things of inspiration that tell him that like you you can do this sort of stuff and then at seventy miles he went and did another 30 miles when he was already dead. Like think about when you were the most exhausted, the most physically frail of anything that you've ever done ever, where you're just like, I can't fucking go anymore. I've got nothing left in the tank. He was there and then went, ran another 30 miles. Um, so yeah, uh, listening to that podcast is if you need something to kick you in the ass for whatever it is that you're trying to do, go listen to it. It's I think, how long is it? I'm going to still get it on my phone here because um, it is a fantastic, fantastic podcast. Um, cast box. Joe Rogan experience and Goggins two hours, two hours and seven minutes. So, I mean, throw it on. If you got a commute, uh, if you're a, uh, if you are a driver, you know, it's something to listen to. Um, if you're a commuter on the subway, you know, throw it on your phone. Give a listen to it on your way to work. Listen to it wherever you can. Even listen to the gym. Um, it might be even good to listen to the gym because holy shit. I'm telling you, I, I always listen to it when I was driving. Um, uh, and actually, I heard, I heard, some, I was listening to some of it on, on Friday or Saturday when I couldn't walk. And I was just like, God. Damn it. Uh, nothing makes me want to get back to the gym more right now. So, um, yeah, give it a listen. It's 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 great. And, again, subscribe to uh, Joe. Um, the other last thing real quick, because holy smokes, this might be one of my longest videos in ages. Um, I haven't been as active on my other channel for a little while, but I'm going to start getting more active. Um, but I do have another channel in case you're interested in seeing me be more of a goofball, uh, and, uh, doing other things other than just fitness. Um, cause yeah, I'm going to keep this with my fitness channel and stop with my rants on this channel. <laughs> so things more like where I'm ranting, getting mad at stuff, um, being goofy, uh, who knows what else I might do. It's not going to be just getting angry, but, um, I do have another channel and I'll link it in the description below as well. It's, uh, it's just the J chambers. Um, actually I don't, I don't have enough subscribers on that one to, uh, to give it a official channel URL yet, but it's, it's just, it's just me. It's Justin J chambers or Justin chambers. Yeah. Justin chambers. Um, so yeah, you know, if you, if you, if you like, if you like hearing me talk about my weight loss and you want to watch videos of me being an idiot, cause that's really who I am. 
um, get to see me argue with computers and uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, check out that in the description below. And of course, also, I have my Instagram account if you want to follow me on there too. Um, but yeah, like, comment, and well, again, especially comment. I want the comments. I want to have conversations with you guys because then maybe... Maybe you got some questions and I can bring them up in the next video and we can, you know, start talking about stuff. Uh, but if you don't, then I don't want anything to talk about. So it'll just be me saying about uh, what I've done. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, I weighed myself this morning. I haven't done my measurements, but I did weigh myself 344 pounds. I'm down 25 pounds. I am happy. I'm feeling good. I'm, today is a good day. Down 25 pounds since January 4th. So it's been almost two months and I've lost two or 25 pounds. I'm happy. And I've these have been two very challenging months of a lot of days off and injuries and medication and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to this month. I think this month's gonna be a good month. As soon as his foot is healed, I'm gonna be able to crush it again. And man, I'm the fact that I am the fact that I am no longer like when I first looked at the scale it was 300, 369 pounds. It's like holy fuck, it's, I'm 370. Now it's like I'm 344. I'm so close to 300. I'm so close to 300 and. It seemed so far away before, but seeing how, seeing, it wasn't easy. It definitely wasn't easy. It's taken a lot of work, but I've enjoyed it at the same time. So it's, I just got to keep putting that work in and the next 25 will come off. And then suddenly I'll be so close to 300. And then the next 25 will come off and then I'll be under 300. And then I'm on the home stretch. I'm on the home stretch. I do want to get the 195. I think 195 would be cool. If I settle in around 200, when it's all said and done, I'll be fine. But I want to get the 195 just to freaking do it. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. I will talk to you guys again soon. Thank you. Take care.